Hello. Howdy. Thank you so much for coming here tonight and lovely to meet you all. My name is Suzanne. I'm from Brisbane. Today I have three deaf guests from Adelaide. We have Donovan, Katrina and Rodney. All three are deaf and from Adelaide. And so I'm going to ask the three of them to share about why the sign name of Adelaide is as it is and how it came about. So I'm going to ask Donovan to start first. Over to you. Well, uh, really I want to say first that I'm not going to show you the sign name and why it was a sign like that. I might leave that to Katrina and Rodney to explain why uh, the sign name for Adelaide emerged and what its origin was. But from my perspective, I want to explain who Samuel Johnson was. His name sign was very similar to the sign name for Adelaide. So we'll explain a little bit more about that later. I want to say I haven't done any in-depth research about the origin of the sign. I haven't done any surveys, but I do have an interest in understanding how the sign name came about. I think it's probably best to ask Katrina and Rodney to explain a little bit more about the origin. So I want to explain who John Samuel Johnson was. He was an important member of the deaf community and there's lots of records to show his importance. Samuel came to Adelaide in around 1885. He was the principal of a school. He had some other jobs as well, but he was the headmaster or principal of Townsend House School, which was formerly known as the South Australian Institution for Blind and Deaf and Dumb, which was established in 1874. Samuel, however, joined the school in 1885 when he came to Adelaide. Many deaf children said that he was a good teacher, but strict. He didn't only work at the school as a headmaster, but he had three roles at the time. The second one was uh, working at the Deaf Society, which was a space for adult deaf people. Um, Samuel had seen in the community that those who were leaving Townsend House didn't have anywhere to go uh, to congregate with other deaf um, people. So he set up a mission in, in 1890 uh, for deaf people to go to. He also planned to establish a building site for the society. And so I'll show you a photo of one of the deaf societies established. So this was in the city, just in the city centre, right near the central markets. It's a beautiful looking building. Uh, it was bought, not built by the deaf community. And Katrina was actually recently telling me that those in the deaf community were determined and raised their own money to own the building uh, outright. So they were the first in Australia to do that um, raising and fundraising to own the building as a community. And Samuel was a real leader in that process. Have you heard of Ernest Abraham from Melbourne? He was a, the superintendent of the Victorian Deaf Society and he came and visited Adelaide and was very impressed with Samuel and his work uh, with the, helping the progression of the Adelaide Deaf community and, and really congratulated him on his, his work. And so the other role that Samuel had was running the Angus Farm and Home. And that was established, I think, in 1898 or 97, somewhere in that time. Maybe, Katrina, you've got a better memory than me. Uh, 1899. That's right, 1899. So Samuel was very impressive. Really, I think that uh, we have the sign name for Adelaide after Samuel. Thank you so much. Katrina, is there anything you want to add over the sign name for Adelaide? A long time ago, maybe 30 or 40 years ago, I met a group of deaf women at a deaf women's group. 
And so I was asking them why the sign name for Adelaide was like this. And uh, they were explaining to me, one woman in particular, uh, Cicely Elderson, who moved to Adelaide from England. She was deaf herself and she was explaining to me why the sign name for Adelaide was it was. Because previously it had been signed like this. And I asked, okay, why, what's the relation between that sign and the new sign for Adelaide and what, where did it come about from? And she described to me, you know, the headmaster, Samuel, who was very strict um, and who was most strict for with naughty boys and he would hit them on the bottom. So, wow, um, you know, that would happen. Samuel would often um, hit the boys. Um, and the other deaf woman agreed, um, you know, he was someone to be reckoned with. And as Don said before, Samuel established a new mission, a deaf mission in the city. And the reason was because when the deaf children had finished schooling at Townsend House, um, as it's known now, they would often stay at school. They didn't know where else to meet other deaf people. And so they would stay around the school under lights um, in the area or close by um, because when the deaf children left, they would often work at the farm, the Angus farm, which was quite close to the Townsend House campus. So they would um, congregate there to um meet and so Samuel decided to establish a place a mission in the city um, in Goodger Street initially um, which was called Rakete Hall for the deaf and so it was actually a religious education initially as a mission and then that's where it started and kept on going from there so they separated you know the towns and house which was for children and established a mission in the city for deaf adults thank you Great. And Rodney, can you introduce a little bit more about the name sign? Well, my name is Rodney and my great uncle, Charlie, came from England when he was 12 years old and went to Townsend House. And he met a lot of the South Australian deaf children in the classes. And so they all told him, oh, be careful of Samuel, you know, don't be naughty, otherwise you'll get in trouble. And so Samuel was the principal at the school and, and he would always walk around with his lower jaw moving and gesticulating like that and looking quite agitated. And when the teachers would hear that Samuel was coming, he would tell everyone to be quiet and, you know, polite. <laughs> then Eugene, who was a missionary uh, from Melbourne, came to Adelaide and also um, Samuel invited the Melbourne cricket team, deaf cricket team, to have a competition between SA and Melbourne. And all the Melbournians were looking at um, Samuel and seeing him gesticulating and being quite agitated and all the deaf people were like, oh, gee, Samuel, he's quite whingy or, you know, very uh, agitated. And so that sort of stuck a little bit. And then when Samuel died... There we go. Um, our same name was penned as Adelaide. Maybe after him, maybe after Samuel, because his sign name was like this, and then it had evolved into the sign for Adelaide as we know it today. That's what I think. There's no proof, but there we go. Oh, great. Do we have a Sam uh, photo of Samuel? Interesting. Wow, thank you for sharing that story of uh, Samuel and how the sign name Adelaide came about and how we still have it to this day. Thank you. I'll stop the video now. Bye.